Alrighty, good morning, good afternoon, good evening traders and welcome to the Forex Morning Coffee and yes, last week was a little bit tight on the pips, we only managed to make 86 pips last week, so I've uh, moved to a smaller cup, it looks like I've been scaled down, uh, hopefully this week is a much better week for trading, uh, traders we're up about 800 plus pips so far since we started the, uh, the Forex Morning Coffee and it's been going really, really good, we've actually got 5 trades in already, that we're going to go ahead and take a look at this morning and see exactly what we're going to go ahead and do. So let's go ahead and quickly take a look at uh, the setups that we have right here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look here. There we go. And we are good. Solid. All right. So this is the uh, the setup that we currently have right here. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, uh, Eric. Good to see everyone here. Uh, fantastic. All right. Good. So this is where we're at. Last week we closed out with uh, the Euro US dollar and we also closed out with the uh, Pound US dollar. If we go to the actual trading account right here, you'll see the history from last week. Those are the two trades we closed out, Euro US dollar. This is of course live trading account my friends. And then we closed out with another trade here on the Pound US dollar right here and uh, we picked up pups on that. If you go ahead and take a look at the overall, it wasn't big moves uh, as you can see right here. We picked up 33 pips on the euro. We picked up another, uh, you know, uh, 53 pips on the pound. So not a very big active week of trading, but yet we still came up, uh, came, came out on top. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the document from last week. Uh, last week we we're looking for the euro cat. Uh, so let me go to the euro cat and take a look at the euro cat setup and see exactly what it is uh, last week that we were looking for and what the market did for us. So here is the uh, Euro CAD, and no, that's not the Euro CAD. So let me go ahead and take a look here. The Euro CAD. There we go. Moving to the chart, and this is the Euro CAD last week. Did you notice last week we did go ahead and hit our target from last week? So uh, as price goes ahead and moves to this level right here, clearly traders. traders Trading is off the table. Now it did, uh, uh, you know, it did uh, move away from the target early in the week. Moved down. Never really gave us an opportunity to get in on this trade, and it moved up. Uh, actually, moved up pretty, ni pretty nice pips right here. Let's take a look right here. Uh, it did go up uh, about 58 pips. All right, but it is what it is. And hey, take a look right here. Uh, we had a monthly target. Uh, this is the target that we're not currently trading, but price did go up to the monthly target. And at the monthly target, we started seeing a downside move on that. So uh, nice to see a, a bit of action in the market this morning, uh, or this uh, yesterday. Uh, although we weren't trading this because uh, this was not part of our uh, pairs that we were following last week. Here it is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this off right here that we actually got this set up right here. This was a hit target. So although we're looking for a trading opportunity, it never presents itself. And it just simply went ahead and, oh, hang on, I'm going to do this. And change this to right here, cancelled. All right. Uh, and, and by the way, we did say we were expecting a deeper dip before the rally took place. That was our comments last week. And uh, as you can see right here, we did actually get price moving a little bit lower at the start of the week. We had a price moving a little bit lower. Then go ahead and rally up. So it did do what we expected to do. Let's get take a look at what else came up. We had the pound Canadian and pound JPY. Those are the two trades that came up last week as well. And you can see there were low probabilities. Rightfully so. We said price is probably going to go ahead and hit those targets before we can actually get in on them. Let's take a look and see how it played out last week. And here is last week. You can see, uh, yep, you can see price didn't really give us too much of a chance. We actually got to our target last week very quickly on the pound CAD and then the pound JPY. Pound JPY, take a look over here. Pound JPY, very similar move, uh, uh, didn't really give it much time and we hit our target. So this is why we called that a low probability last week on both of these pairs. And uh, well, there you go. Both of them hit its target. So if we are looking for any opportunity on this, we certainly went ahead and cancelled that. And then uh, we got the pound US dollar that went ahead and struck its number there. 
Uh, Frank, good morning you. Frank says good morning. Uh, and he says, good morning, Eagle fans. All right, I like you. Frank, I like you. I like you. Well, we're going to have better luck next year with the Eagles. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have zero injuries and we're about to play with uh, our players uh, because currently right now, we're running at low, low, low energy when it comes to uh, having all our teammates playing on the same team, the same time, without major injury. So hopefully we're going to have a better season next year. But I'm looking forward to the Super Bowl this, uh, this week. It's going to be uh, the 49ers against the Chiefs. I'm leaning more for the Chiefs at this point in time, just because of Mahone. I like him. He's a youngster. He's just come on board. And I'm really hoping that he takes it to uh, uh, to uh, to a win. So we'll see what happens this weekend. Uh, who's your favorite team this weekend? Is it the Chiefs or is it the 49ers? All right. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look uh, once again. Um, so these two right here hit targets. We can cancel them. We have the Aussie. Uh, take a look here. Aussie New Zealand dollar. Aussie CAD. Uh, Aussie US dollar. All of these trades right here were setting up as well last week. Let's take a look and see how that played out. Start with Aussie New Zealand dollar here. And Aussie New Zealand dollar, easy money, hit a target. It pretty much went sideways. Uh, if you actually take a look right here, we had a little bit of an expansion move out of that contraction. Uh, but it went ahead and hit his target. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and mark that off as a hit target for that week. Let's take a look over here, Aussie US dollar. So Aussie US dollar, uh, let's take a look and see what's going on here. Here we had price uh, moving away from its target. Oh, in fact, take a look here. Uh, last week, we actually had uh, the market. I'm gonna go ahead and pull a little circle around that. Take a look here. We had price moving in that week didn't quite hit our target, as you can see right here. Well, it didn't give us an opportunity to get in. All right, we didn't hit our target. Price moved away. Let's see, this is the range we moved in right here. And as you can see right here, no overbought, oversold condition. So uh, the reason why we look at the RSI is that it gives us a very clear understanding of what the market's trying to do. And uh, right there and there, uh, last week, it told us that price was really moving sideways. All right, so we had a bit of sideways action on the uh, uh, the Aussie US dollar last week, no overboard or over uh, overboard or um, uh, oversold condition at all last week. Um, uh, Karen says, Gary, have you moved to have you moved the uh, uh, the morning coffee to this time of the day? And then the answer to that is no, I have not. Um, the reason why I actually moved it to the the afternoon, I had a little bit of an incident with my gallbladder this morning. I was taken to the hospital. And, uh, man, left the hospital, had to go in and snooze up all the drugs that they gave me, and I'm um, back on track again. So, um, yeah, that's another story on its own. But, no, this time uh, it's still going to be 9 o'clock, right? It's still going to be 9 o'clock. Um, Rashad, uh, Rashad, sorry, Rashad says, uh, what's up, big dog? Frank's in the house. Frank says, Chiefs are it. Chiefs are it. <laughs> okay. All right, he's got the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are also going to give, have a good chance at winning the Super Bowl this week. So we'll take a look and see what happens. All right. Now, good question here. Um, there's a good question that's came up right here. Uh, uh, and the question is this. What is the smallest account that we can trade with this strategy? Well, there is no small account. All right. You can trade any size account that you want to with the strategy all right any account size now how is that possible well you have to make sure that you go ahead and select your current spreads if you're trading with a very small trading account you may want to move it down to one or two current spreads and uh i, I don't really want to talk about it right now in the session let me well let me first get through the trade setup and i'll go ahead and talk about if we've got some time i'll go ahead and talk about um you know what we can do to be able to uh, manage a small trading account in fact, I'm going to be doing a video on that. In fact, I won't even do it in the session. I'm going to create a video on that because I'm going to be talking about the strategy and what we're doing. But I'm also going to go ahead and talk about small trading accounts, how you can manage small trading accounts 
using the st trading strategy, all right? Because clearly traders, if you do have a small trading account, you just cannot trade 28 currency pairs. It's just not going to happen, right? There's just, obviously, there's some sort of risk tolerance that you've got to consider because of not just the, the, the risk on the trading account itself, but of course, the uh, the margin. How much margin is required to be able to trade the strategy in, that, that doesn't force you a margin call? We don't want margin calls, all right? Margin calls are not cool, all right? It's not cool. So we're going to go ahead and... We're going to go ahead and talk about that in another video, all right? Now, traders, if you're not involved in uh, these trading setups that we're talking about today, if you're not involved and you want to get more involved and, and you don't want to do it manually, but you want an automated system to be able to trade this, well, in the description, you'll see I have provided links for you to be able to gain access to what we call Target Trading 3.0, all right? This is the strategy we, we're following here in this session. If you want to get access to that, Go ahead and click on the link below in the description and you'll be able to get uh, uh, access to that uh, strategy. All right. Um, all right, cool. Let's go ahead and take a look right here. Uh, thanks, Doug. Yeah, I'm all good now. Uh, thanks, Karen. Much appreciated. I'm all good right now. Tell you this much. Thank goodness for uh, these. Uh, thank goodness for these uh, pain medications, man. Oh. What a morning, what a morning. I was up from 1 o'clock all the way up until 7 o'clock this morning in total, total pain. Uh, anyway, that's another story on another day. Let's get back to the market setup. So Aussie US dollar also showed us no opportunity last week. So we can go ahead and mark these three pairs off right here as hit targets. Wait a minute. We didn't see one hit target. Aussie US dollar never hit the target. Okay, let's go ahead. Go back here, mark this off. Aussie US dollar never hit its target, but we did cancel this trade because it just never happened. All right, no overbought condition on this one right here. So we went ahead and canceled that. No trade. There it is. There. Uh, this was also no trade right here. No trade there, and there was also no trade. All right, just make sure we update the document. And then of course uh, Aussie CAD. We said Aussie CAD and Aussie US dollar. Let's just double check on this. We had a hit target last week on Aussie CAD and then Aussie New Zealand dollar. We had the same thing. Also, we hit target last week. All right, good. So, uh, we never managed to get in on these two pairs right here. So, we're going to go say no trade to that as well. And no trade to that. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to keep this as low probability here just so we know that that was. All right, so this is what we have, all right? We had two trades that paid off last week. We made uh, 86 total last week on the two trades. And uh, we're going to go ahead and continue with the market review. All right, we're still looking at, it uh, looks like we still got a pair right here. And I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, freeze up this column. This is how you do it. Go ahead and do this. Click on to freeze. By the way, this, uh, this document is actually, in fact, uh, uh, available inside the... Oh, it's looking like it's not doing it for me today. All right, this document is available inside uh, the, the descriptions as well, all right? So make sure you can get this document. It is inside the descriptions. Go ahead and drop this down to 85 or let's say 90. Should be good. All right, there we go. I just wanted to get some more real estate on this document so i can see more there we go that's better okay so the uh the one pair is still pinning right now is the this one right here all right we still got the euro uh aussie dollar painting from a couple of weeks ago let's go take a look and see how that's playing out and then traders yes we are going to get into the trades this week so this is the euro uh, jpy and the trade that we're looking for on this Let's see here. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. Uh, is it that one? No, that one's hit, right? Oh, there it is there. 121.20. Is that the one we're looking for? And price did come to that level? I think it did. I think it did. Let's take a look and see which one it was. Okay. Yeah, we were selling. We were selling on Euro JPY. We we're chasing after our target for that week. This was at the... Second week, this was the last week, this was the week before that. We sold at 122.20, uh, 
15. I think I may have deleted the... Let me see if I can bring it back again. Well, let me put it in here. 122.15 was right here. And I believe we picked up two positions on this. Uh, let me see here. I average two range. Let me just get the average two range here. Or 60, call it 70 pips. So let me see here. Did we manage to get in another trade? Oh, wow. We closed out with more than just 60, 68 pips. Oh, no, no. This one didn't pick us up. Hang on. Wait a minute. I maybe I didn't mark it right. Oh, wow. 68 pips. Can you believe that? That was two entry points. There it is there. Entry point one here. This was the initial sell right here. All right. And then we picked up a second entry point right about there. And that was the first entry point is 122.15. Let's double check on that. Yeah, there it is. 122.15. That was our entry point right here. And we picked up two positions. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what and when we closed out with this trade right here. Because this is a win on the Euro JPY. And as you can see here, traders, this is the target right about here. There's our target right here. And so price came to this level in last week. And we closed out with two positions. And we're going to mark it off. This position was 91. We'll call it 92. 92 pips and 160. All right. 92 pips and 160. That, this one was 160 right here. And this one was 92. So uh, that'll be 270 less 8, uh, and that'll be 262. Uh, that's not right. My bad. What am I saying? Come on. 52. There we go. All right. So we're at 162. All right. Uh, sorry, 152. Sorry, I said 162 again. 152, that was the net P&L right here. 152. All right. Uh, uh, Leslie, yes, that is correct. Yes. Leslie, that is correct. Yes. All right. So let's go ahead and add this to the document right here. So we actually closed out last week. We actually had a good closeout last week. And we're going to add it all up. This is the one that we closed out with, a, with 252 pips right here. So traders, last week was actually a good week for us. 338 pips. So we're actually over a thousand pips so far. My bad. My apologies for lying so much on that uh, that PL. We actually killed it last week with 252 pips uh, closed out on the Euro JPY. So congratulations for those traders that hung on to that trade and profited on that trade right there. Now let's go ahead and continue. Let's clean up. And by the way, traders, you notice once the trade's done, I'm, I'm, I'm closing it up. We're moving on to the next uh, the next uh, setup. And let's go ahead and take a look at this week right now. What's going on with this week's trading? Oh, by the way, I need to also go ahead and do this. Um, this one right here. We're going to go ahead and mark it off as closed. And I'm going to go ahead and actually put the date here. Closed out at... Or at least on and this is the week uh, let's go ahead and get the date would have been this candle right about here and we can call that the 23rd of January so closed on the 23rd of January and that is 2020 baby all right cool that's it done so we end up closing that one out 2020 January. you can come over here and take a look and there it is there we've got it marked off it's closed out so let's take a look and see what's going on this week. All right, exciting stuff, my friends. So it's the 27th this week. And I'm going to go ahead and clean up the house because we've got nothing left to go ahead and focus in on this week except for what's happening right now. So what I'm going to do is right now, traders, I'm going to go ahead and jump into our setups right here. You'll see... Here are our trades. We've got one, two, three, four, and five trades open. All right. Let's go ahead and mark off what we've got going here. And I'm going to go through the charts 
very quickly, we'll start off with the Euro Aussie. And then we'll double check and see if we got these trades in. So it looks like the first trade that we've got this morning uh, is a, a Euro Aussie, but it's not entry. We haven't entered yet on this. So this one's going to be pending. So let's go ahead and say, uh, any target on Euro Aussie, it's going to be looking for an overbought condition and it's going to be a uh, pending. All right, a pending sell. So we're looking for a the sell position. All right, let's go take a look at the next trade. Next trade, and I'm going to hide this. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Go ahead and hide this. There we go. Clean up the charts. Oh, I cannot do that. Oh, I just realized I got that stuff visuals in. You know what? Let's do this. Um, all right, never mind. Uh, all right, so the next trade. Next trade is going to be EuroCAD. Uh, Michael says, yeah, Gary, uh, need a 32 inky on the RSI. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, thank you. Appreciate that, yeah. Good, you can see we've got an old student here. Nice, Mike. Thanks for kidding. Thanks for checking it out. This was set for th uh, 37. Yeah, I don't know why it changed, but thank you. Appreciate appreciate that. All right. So let's go to uh, the let's go back to the Euro Aussie. Did we get a Euro Aussie trade setup? Darn it, we did. There it is. We're actually in on this. Let me go take a look at my trading account. Uh, Euro Aussie, and there it is. Euro Aussie sell. We got in at 62.82. All right, good call there, Mike. Nicely done, bird. All right, 62.82. That's the entry point. So let's go ahead and mark it off. 62.82. We're in. All right, so we're active on that trade. Good call, Mike. Next trade. Euro Aussie. Euro Aussie is a hit target this week. Yep, no trading opportunity on this baby. Let's go ahead and call a hit target. Move on to the uh, Euro JPY. Oh, I wonder if we're going to get up, get another trade on the Euro JPY this week. Euro JPY showing an unhit target, uh, and price has moved into a over sold condition. We should be active on this one. If it picked up before eight o'clock, let's see the close right here. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, wait a minute. I don't think we're in on this one. Traders, by the way, we only trade from 8 a, uh, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And you can see this candle closed out. Would have closed out at 8 o'clock. And the RSI would have been in an actual buy zone, not in an oversold condition. So, I don't believe I'm in on the Euro JPY yet. Nope. That's the reason why, traders, you, see it, you don't see a trade right now active. Right? Because the RSI never closed out by 8 o'clock and so we're not in on that baby right here so this is an unhit target and it's pending and we're looking for an oversold condition want to go ahead and buy this uh, this pair going long so this one's going to be uh, waiting for a trading opportunity let's go to euro New Zealand dollar and this one actually right here Price did come back and forth between, so we're going to call this a hit target. Let me just take a look and see. I don't think I've got a trade in right here. We call this a hit target. Uh, yeah, we don't have a trade in on this one right here. So this is a hit target, and we're moving on. So let's go ahead and call that a hit target, and we're moving on. Next one is pound. This is a euro pound right here. Your pound, we have a hit target. I'm going to call this one, a, uh, sorry, we have an unhit target. And I'm going to call this one also low probability right here as well. So low probability, unhit target. We're looking for a uh, over sold condition, my bad. We're looking to buy long on this one right here. But I'm going to call that a low probability. Now, traders, just for those that don't know what low probability means. Well, low probability for me means that, that, Price may end up may end up going towards our target, all right? May end up going towards our target before we can actually get into an overbought, oversold condition. Which means that we may be slightly range bound. The market may not be looking for a nice setup uh, for a good a good jump. And and let's use the right terminology, right? The market may be consolidated, which means contract in a contraction phase, and we maybe we may not. 
see price create an expansion phase by actually getting deeper into the, uh, 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 the overbought condition, creating a trading opportunity, and then go to the target. So I'm expecting the expansion breakout to be towards the target first, and then only then go into an overbought condition, which doesn't really put us in a good trade at all. So that's the reason why I'm calling it the low probability, all right? Um, okay, so let's take a look and see uh, what else we've got. So that's, uh, we've got one more pair on the euro to cover, uh, and that is euro, US dollar. Let's take a look at that one. And here it is here. Euro, US dollar. And we've got, woo, only a target. Price not over, so this is a pin in order right here. So we're going to be looking for this one this week as well. A lot of things happening right about now. Looking for an oversold condition. We want to put a buy load on those. Um, and actually, you know what? These will be pending orders right here. Yeah, let me change it over to a pending order. Oh, not that one. Sorry, my bad. This one. So this is going to be pending. This is going to be pending. We're not overbought, overbought, oversold yet. These are going to be pending right here. Um, so that's going to be waiting for a trading opportunity this week as well. So that's it. That's what we got going right here. We act up in one of the euro crosses and we got three of them waiting three of them pinning right now oh it's going to be an active week for a trader this is going to be huge huge i tell you all right let's go to the pound crosses all right pound crosses we got uh let's see here we have an unhit target i'm going to go ahead and throw this one out as a low probability as well you can see our price is starting to work its way down to the target so i'm going to call this a hit uh, uh unhit target it's going to be pending we're looking for a uh, buy. Uh, is that a buy? My bad, it's a sell. We're looking for a sell. We're looking for a bearish condition. I'm going to call that a low probability as well. Let's go to pound JPY. And traders, you can see I go through this very quickly. We don't need to sit and ponder on this too long. It's either uh, setting up an opportunity or it's not. All right. Now, here we go. Pound, uh, pound JPY. We had this big gap in the market. Price actually filled the gap. Check that out right there. All right, we actually filled the gap up there. So price managed to fill the gap um, and then work its way back down south again. But for right now, we do have an only target to the upside. But I don't believe we actually had a trade in on this. No, we did not. No siree. Let's double check on this. Nope. Just like uh, I think it was the euro. Exact same thing. Not a trading opportunity on that. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up as a I need target. It is going to be pending. We're looking for a buy alert on this one right here. Did I have the pound? So we're looking for a buy alert. Did I get it right on the pound CAD? Yes, I did. Okay, good. Okay, buy alert. And I'm going to call this one also a low probability because it looks like price may end up moving up to its target before we actually get a trading opportunity on this. So got a low probability there. Look at the pound New Zealand dollar. Check out the pound New Zealand dollar right here. So pound New Zealand dollar also gapped over the weekend right here. And uh, we haven't got into an overbought condition. This looks like a one of the hotter, hotter trades that we've seen so far. I'm going to go with this as pending as well. We're looking for a sell bearish alert. And this one is good. I like this one. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at pound Aussie. All right, Pound Aussie right here. Pound Aussie also, nice little move away from the target this week, creating a buy opportunity. Let's take a look right here. Pound Aussie, we should be in. Uh, there it is. Pound Aussie, we're in at 93.24. All right, 93.24. And we are selling. So 93.24, we're in on this one right here. And it's in the overboard condition. We're selling 90, uh, 93.24. There it is there. We're active on this one right here. Just like we are selling on that one too. All right. And by the way, did I change these alerts here? This was a buy. Sorry, I didn't even change this. Yeah, there we go. Did I do the others? Yeah, I did the other ones. All right, good. 
for a minute I didn't think I updated it. All right, cool. Um, all right, so there we go. We're on on those. Now, uh, Michael says, uh, wrong alert on the euro US dollar. Do I have the wrong alert? Uh, let's see here. Bearish alert. Man, I'll tell you something. It shows you what drugs can do to you if you take it too early in the morning. Uh, we're looking for a bullish alert. You're right, Mike. Woo. Guys, warning. Do not take drugs before you trade. All right. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. Say no to drugs before trading. All right. And that includes too much caffeine. All right. <laughs> too much caffeine. By the way, I, I don't take drugs. I'm just letting you know. It's just pain, pain calls. Uh, all right. Good. Um, so what do we got going here? So we got that set up right there. Uh, let's go to the pound US dollar. Pound US dollar looks pretty good, pretty solid this week as well. Let's take a look. And uh, yep, we have a hit target this week on pound US dollar. So nothing happening in pound US dollar this week. Hit target. Let's go to the Aussie crosses. Here we go, Aussie JPY. Uh, Aussie JPY, we set up with a buy. Looks like we're in on the Aussie JPY. Let's take a look here. Uh, Aussie JPY, there it is there. We actually got three Aussies in. Uh, Aussie JPY, we're in at 73.80 and we are buying. 73.80. Let's put it in. 73. Eighty, and we are active on this one. We are in a buy. We need an oversold condition, and we have an only target. Nice. All right. Next trade. Uh, New Zealand dollar, Aussie New Zealand dollar. What does this one look like this week? Well, we don't have an oversold condition. Price is saying yes. We're going to go up north. Let's go ahead and call this one. This is going to be an only target. We're looking for, oh, we're looking, this is going to be a pending order. And uh, let's see here. Uh, we're going to look for a buy alert. And this one is currently not active. Let's go to the Aussie CAD. There's Aussie CAD right here. Aussie CAD, we're in on this one. We can see how far away we're from, from the target. In fact, we can see we're trading around about, what, 80 pips away? Close to 80 pips away from that target. So let's go ahead and call this one right here. This is a new target. We went in an oversold condition. We actually buying right now. We're in on this trade. What price are we in at? Well, let's take a look and see. Aussie CAD. There it is there. 89, uh, 89.09. All right. So 89.09. We're active. And let's go to the Aussie US dollar. Aussie US dollar is showing a trader for us this week as well. All right, this is it. Price has moved away from that. All right, gone into an overboard condition. We're definitely going to be looking to go long on this one right here. So we've got an unhit target. Uh, over sold condition. We buying. And we've got a price. Uh, we're entered on this price right here. There it is, uh, 6773. Alright, so let's go ahead and say 6773. Alright, we're in. And we're active. Alright, let's take a look at these last two right here. Uh, New Zealand. This is New Zealand CAD. Uh, New Zealand CAD, we're going to call that a hit target this week. Alright. Let's go to the next pair, uh, US dollar CAD. And US dollar CAD is actually, we do have a, uh, I don't know if we're in an overbought condition yet. Let's take a look and see how close this, this has been. Uh, not quite overbought condition, no. Let's see, it looked like it almost reached it over here. Nope. So we're not in an overbought condition on this one right here. Let's call it a... So this was a hit target. This is an unhit target. And this one we're looking for an overbought condition. And we're looking for a bearish alert. 
right here. So that one's not active. So let's go ahead and sum it up, traders. All right, we've got what? One, two, three, four, and five. So we five trades in there. You can see we can confirm it. I'm in five trades at the moment right now. I'm carrying no trades over from the previous weeks. We, we have closed out everything that we have. And, and I've got, uh, let's see, uh, uh, pinning orders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pinning orders. All right, good. Seven, sorry, eight pinning orders. But out of those pinning orders, you'll notice right here that we actually have, uh, let's see here. We've got one, two, three, three low probability trade setups right here. All right, three of them are low probabilities right here. That's what we got right here. So that's pretty much all we have for this morning. So a couple of things here. A couple of things here. Um, we're gonna. I, I've been talking about the daily targets, right? And I'm definitely going to start looking at trading daily targets. But the one thing that we have to understand right now is that if we're going to look at daily targets, uh, I want to try and see if I can cover as many currency pairs as I possibly can. But in order to be able to cover as many currency pairs as possible, I have to go ahead and reduce my rips. So that's something I'm going to be working through this week. Uh, and then maybe next week, I'm going to move to daily targets instead of the weekly targets. Or I'm just simply going to go ahead and apply that to another trading account and keep this one on the weeklies. But I have to look at the risk traders because that's a very important question that uh, one of the traders asked early on. You know, how big of a size trading account can I uh, do I have to have in order to be able to trade these uh, the strategy? And I said that you can trade with any trading size account, right? Any trading account size. But the problem is if you do trade with any trading account size. You have to also know, all right, what trades you can take on because you cannot go ahead and trade 28 currency pairs. You may not even be able to trade 16 currency pairs. You know, you may not even be able to trade 10 currency pairs. But if you can pick the top five and take the top five, now how do you choose that? How do you choose the top five? Well, it goes back to the, the results that we had right here. We, we went ahead and I'm going to go ahead and see if I've got it over here. Yeah, there it is here. We went ahead and I showed you, oh, I may need to sign back in again. Hold on, give me a sec here. Looks like this document is uh, requiring me to sign back in again. Ah. All right, well, in any case, I'll probably show you next time. But what I'm trying to say here is that we're going to go, we're going to have to go ahead and take the top five currency pairs that did the best last year, because all we can do is take from the data from last year, right? Take the top five best currency pairs and then go ahead and make absolutely certain that you make sure that your equity management is worked out correctly so that you can manage those five with a small trading account, but also at the same time, don't get into an over leverage issue. All right, you absolutely got to make sure you watch it. Now, what I may do on the daily targets, all right, this is something I may go ahead and do. I may go ahead and actually go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the setups and look to see if I can go ahead and trade not just 10 entry points, but to be able to limit it to maybe five entry points. Now, if I limit to five, the first one is the initial entry point, so it's five additional add-ons, but one uh, initial entry point. So total entries are going to be six. Now, if I trade with six entry points, and I go ahead and I reduce my risk to a 0.05% on each trade, then I will be able to trade more currency pairs and have more opportunities out there. So this is what I'm going to be doing over the next couple of days as we head into the end of the weekend. As I start next week, I want to go ahead and actually go and say, guys, this is my plan. And I'm going to give you that information, right? This is my plan. This is the trading account size that I have. This is the type of uh, equity management I'm going to be using. This is the type of risk I'm going to be placing on each trade. This is how I'm going to manage the position. I'll give you all of that information once I make the decision on that. Now, remind, just remind everyone, I'm not a CTA, so I cannot advise you how to do your training account and how to manage your own training account, right? I cannot do that. So you're going to have to go make up your own decision. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do, and hopefully, based on what I'm doing, you'll be able to work up the numbers and figure out exactly how you will be able to trade your account. All right, traders, well, that's it. Uh, thank you for joining. Love you guys. Listen, yeah, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, 
go ahead and do so today your support is very important and i really appreciate that subscribe to the channel like the video and also throw some comments in there if you need any uh, questions answered throw the comments in there also the inside the description is access to the actual system that you're trading the automated system do you want to get that and be part of what you're doing right here because maybe manually it's been a bit of a tough t task for you then go ahead and check out that link below and uh, we'll see you back in tomorrow's session. Zephic Big Dog signing off.